In 2012, Elon Musk commissioned a group of engineers to start developing the engines that would be used to run SpaceX's Starship, a fully reusable, super heavy lift vehicle that would facilitate easy movement of crew and cargo to the moon, Mars, and beyond. The Starship consists of two parts, the booster stage called Super Heavy, and a second stage spacecraft designed for cargo and passengers. They are collectively referred to as Starship. Starship will be the world's most powerful launch vehicle to be ever developed. With the ability to carry in excess of 150 metric tons to lower Earth orbit surpassing the Saturn V rocket's payload capacity of 140 tons, which took the first humans to the moon. It was in 2012, when Musk described for the first time SpaceX plans to build a super heavy vehicle codename Mars Colonial Transporter. Initially nicknamed BFR or Big Falcon Rocket, the name of the vehicle underwent a whole lot of changes. SpaceX began to refer to the entire system as the Interplanetary Transport System. But finally, in 2018, Musk renamed the spaceship as Starship, and the first stage booster as Super Heavy. The entire system has two different reusable elements. A 165-foot tall spacecraft called Starship, capable of carrying passengers and cargo, which will sit atop a 230-foot tall giant rocket called Super Heavy. The final Starship would have a total of 6 Raptor engines, while the Super Heavy would be powered by a total of 30 engines, which grew to 35 engines, as Musk tweeted out the total number of engines in the complete stack to be 41. The main propulsion system on Starship would be a methane-slash-oxygen propellant Raptor engines. Unlike the Saturn V rockets, which use Keralox, a mix of liquid oxygen and kerosene for the first stage within the atmosphere, and Hydrolox, a mix of liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen for the second and third stages in space. SpaceX Starship would use Methalox, a mixture of liquid oxygen and liquid methane. The remarkable nature of Methalox is that it burns in both the first and second stages, i.e. in atmosphere and space, without having to switch fuel types, simplifying the design of Starship's engines. Since SpaceX's Starship does not use any third stage, it further simplifies the entire process by twofold. Only one type of fuel needed, and only two stages to make the journey to space. The reason for not requiring a separate third stage is that no other rocket engine is as capable of producing as much energy out of the liquid methane and liquid oxygen as the Raptor engines. Rockets are no doubt complicated. Simply switching to a different fuel that can be used in both atmosphere and outer space really makes a heck lot of difference. But the advantage does not end there. Methanlox also helps in reusability. Musk plans to make the first and second stages 100% reusable. The booster stage Super Heavy is primarily used to escape the Earth's gravitational pull, hence it would not need additional thrust. But unlike Earth's gravity, the gravity in Mars would not be that strong. Hence, only six engines are attached in the Starship. Since the entire plan revolves around going to Mars and coming back to Earth, sort of a shuttle between two planets, SpaceX needed a fuel which is widely available not only on Earth, but also on Mars. We cannot simply overstate the importance of being able to generate methane at locations other than Earth. Methane is one of those components that's abundantly available in other planets, even in comets in the form of ice. In short, it's bountiful in places other than Earth. But hang on, isn't hydrogen the most abundant molecule in the universe? If you insist, it's hydrogen that's abundant. Well, you're not wrong. Besides, hydrogen is also easier to obtain than methane. So why not hydrogen, you ask? Well, the problem with hydrogen is storage. Since the density of hydrogen is very low, to store it in a gaseous state, one would require massive tanks, which tend to leak hydrogen. Not through just the minute cracks, but because hydrogen can actually migrate through solid metals. Hydrogen can penetrate right into the crystal structure of a solid metal, making hydrogen highly problematic to store. Moreover, cooling it to a liquid state would require massive amounts of power. Compare that with the methane-based fuel methalox, which is a nice compromise between the raw power of Keralox and the fuel economy of Hydrolox. If all goes according to plan, Starship will be the most powerful rocket packing a monstrous 7.3 million kg of thrust. That's twice the thrust of Saturn V rocket, the most powerful rocket ever built which took us to the moon. It is estimated that Starship can launch around 1,000 times using methalox. Musk also deviated from the traditional carbon fiber used in the fuselage or their main body rockets. Instead, Musk plans to use stainless steel, citing ease of production, strength, and most importantly, cost. Starhopper A stub-top cylinder made its initial flight test in July 2019 hopping around 20 meters, 66 feet, in altitude, and a final second hop in August of 2019 to reach an altitude of 150 meters or 490 feet. Starhopper basically provided a way to test one of the Raptor engines in low altitude hop flights. In February 2020, SN1 was lost during pressurization. 
Musk then focused on addressing the problem that resulted in the failure of SN2. SN3, however, was lost to a prototype collapse in the pressure tank test. On the 26th of April last year, Starship SN4 became the first full-scale prototype to pass the cryogenic proof test. It goes on to complete the single engine static fire mounted with a single Raptor engine. SN4 would complete a total of four short static engine fires before being destroyed due to a propellant leak. SN5 would then become the first full-scale prototype to perform a successful test flight. On the 9th of December last year, SN8 flew 41,000 feet testing the body flaps during its belly flop descent and the first flip maneuver landing burn at the end of the free fall phase. Why all these dance moves in the air? Well, simply put in one word, reusability. Well, two words actually. Also survival of whoever's in the starship. You see, recovering the first stage booster, as it had been demonstrated several times by the Falcon rockets, is easy because it ejected only two minutes after the launch at a relatively low altitude, never reaching hypersonic speeds. Hypersonic speeds are speeds between Mach 10 and Mach 25, i.e. 10 times or 25 times the speed of sound. The booster only reaches Mach 6. Starship itself will be reaching speeds of 25 times the speed of sound or Mach 25. At that speed, the re-entry of the vehicle would completely melt the engines. Hence, you need a hefty heat shield that disseminates more than 99% of the energy during re-entry, insulating the cargo and everyone within this starship. The brilliance of Starship is that the belly flops into a free fall while the atmosphere gradually reduces its speed. As it comes down to the ground, the speed must be sufficiently slowed down for it to do a short flip at the same time reignite the engines to touch down softly on the pad. Bear in mind, no other vehicle of Starship's size or proportion maneuvers like this on purpose. The free fall that Starship is attempting is akin to a condition called stall in aircrafts, where because of the lack of airflow the aircraft will literally fall out of the sky. Starship will be entering the atmosphere at a 90 degree angle, meaning that it is fully stalled. The reason why SpaceX found it so difficult to execute the maneuver despite landing Falcon multiple times is the unpredictable nature and inherently unstable configuration. This is where the active control comes in. SpaceX attached four flaps to be used to control the freefall. With the SN8 test flight, SpaceX has demonstrated that it's definitely possible to control the belly flop. The drop from 12.5 kilometers gave essential data to SpaceX for the last half of the return from orbit. However, the SN8 landed at a higher speed than intended and exploded. SN9 tried another 10 km flight test but once again exploded as one of the Raptor engines failed to ignite. Last month, the SN10 for the first time completed landing the Starship fully intact this time after a 10 km flight. But the unexpected low thrust caused it to have a hard landing and its oxygen and methane tanks shattered, catastrophically resulting in the explosion of the SN10 on landing. NASA recently selected SpaceX's Starship for its Artemis program, sending humans to the moon. The $2.89 billion contract awarded to SpaceX will carry the next two American astronauts to the lunar surface. We really do live in incredible times, where in the next decade we may be looking at humans setting foot on Mars. Musk funded SpaceX with the sole purpose of making humans multiplanetary. With the success of SN10, Musk is a tad bit closer to the goal of making humans multiplanetary. We don't know whether Musk will fail or succeed, but it would really be something to see humans setting up base in Mars. So we will leave it right here. If you're new here, consider subscribing to this channel. Thanks for watching this video. Consider giving it a like if you enjoyed watching. That's it for now. I'll see you in the next video.